Hello, I'm Dr. Malcolm Barfield. Your appointment today is because you had an abnormal pap smear. Today we're going to be performing colposcopy. Now this is a procedure that allows me to look at your cervix under a microscope and find the abnormal areas. Once I find the abnormal areas, I may or may not take biopsies. These biopsies will be sent to a pathologist and it will take five to seven days for them to return. Once they return, we will give you a call on the phone and let you know what the results are. So what I'm going to do now is explain to you what an abnormal pap smear means, what the test results may come back with colposcopy, and what possible therapies we may discuss when we call you with results. If you have any questions, please write them down. And when I come into the room, you'll have an opportunity to ask me questions and have those questions answered. So what we're going to look at is a timeline. This would be a normal appearing cervix. And this would be a cervix with cervical cancer. It takes years to go from normal to cervical cancer, typically. Certain medical conditions make you go down this timeline much quicker. HIV, chronic steroid use as in asthmatics, uh, smoking, people with abnormal cells on their cervix must stop smoking. These cells have nicotine receptors on them and you'll go down this line much quicker. There are a lot of little changes that occur over the years. These beginning changes are caused by one of the human papillomavirus. There's about 200 of those, and of those, there's about four, 13, 14, 15 known to cause abnormal pap smears. What a pap smear does is it puts you under one of these three humps on this line. First, there's ascus pap smear, then there's a low-grade pap smear, and a high-grade pap smear. Occasionally you'll see a pap smear that comes back ask us, but they're not quite sure if it's high grade or not. Um, and that's a little bit unusual. All of these abnormalities deal with the squamous cell line of abnormalities, which are the most common. The other is glandular cells, which we're not going to cover here today. Um, When we do the colposcopy, what we're looking at is the cervix. So if you look inside the vagina, of course this is where you would have intercourse. This area here would be the cervix, and it functions somewhat like a cork holding your baby in while you're pregnant. A baby, if you were pregnant, would be right here inside your womb. And the abnormal cells that I'm referring to are typically seen right in here. Although they can be deep down in the cervix, um, which can be seen on pap smear, but not necessarily on colposcopy. So I'm going to diagram out what the skin of the cervix looks like. Now when we do the colposcopy, we put some burning tingly stuff on the cervix, which is a medical grade acetic acid or vinegar. Um, and we look at the area with a microscope. The abnormal areas will show up and then we'll take very, very small biopsies. And what those biopsies will show me is one of several different findings. So what we're going to do today, right now, is draw your skin. So we're going to imagine that little area that was on that other diagram of skin. This will be the skin of the cervix. Up under the skin, there's a membrane-ish type thing that goes into what we call the stroma. What the pap smear will come back as is CIN which stands for cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. There'll be a CIN1, a CIN2, CIN3, 
CIS and then cancer itself. So CIN1 is when one third of that skin layer is full of the abnormal cells. Now the abnormal cells for CIN1 and cervical cancer are all the same cells. It's location, location, location. So the cells are actually the same, it's just where they're found. CIN2 is where two-thirds of the skin layer of the cervix is filled with abnormal cells. CIN3, as you may guess, is almost three-thirds. Then CIS, there's three-thirds of the way, I'm sorry, it's completely full of these abnormal cells. And then cancer, of course, is where these abnormal cells now break through the basement membrane or into the stroma. And that's where it becomes cancer. Now, here, we can be very aggressive in treating you in the treatments. Once you become cancer, this area treatment varies if it's very very early cancer like 1A1, 1A2 we can still do hysterectomy anything beyond that actually is chemo and radiation there is no um, surgery for that stage of cancer and beyond but all this area is very treatable and that's why we're very aggressive in finding abnormalities of the cervix in treating them um, CIN1, typically we can do a freezing um, called a cryotherapy. Um, occasionally we can do that also with CIN2. It depends on how many babies you've had, things of that nature. CIN2 CIN3 and CIS, we can do several different things. One, you could opt for a hysterectomy. Um, we could do a procedure called a leap. Or we could do a thing called a coal knife cone, or CKC is our abbreviation for it which is basically the same thing as LEAP, but it's done in the operating room. Um, and again, cancer would be a discussion for another time. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to write those down for me, and I will be happy to answer those. The biopsies today will not be available today. I'll have a basic idea and understanding of the cervix, but I will not give you a definitive diagnosis. Again, that will take five to seven business days, and we will call you with those results. Thank you.